Leaders in both House and Senate, both parties, deserve credit for making the hard compromises to get this done. But like all compromises, it's far from perfect. But it does provide vital relief at a critical moment. However, as I've said all along, this bill is just the first step, a down payment, in addressing the crisis, the crises, more than one, that we're in. There's a lot more work to do. Early next year, I'm going to put forward to the Congress my plans for what comes next. We'll need more help to fully distribute the vaccine. We're going to need more testing in order to be able to open our schools. We need more funding to help firefighters and police, many of whom are being laid off as I speak. And the same with nurses risking their lives on the front lines. The same for millions of hurting families who are unable to put food on the table, pay rent or the mortgage. Unemployment is extended for another 10 weeks. It's going to take a lot longer than that. But Congress did its job this week. And I can and I must ask them to do it again next year. But even with the changes in approach I'm going to put in place in late January, people are still going to be getting sick and dying from COVID. One thing I promise you about my leadership during this crisis, I'm going to tell it to you straight. I'm going to tell you the truth. And here's the simple truth. Our darkest days in the battle against COVID are ahead of us, not behind us. So we need to prepare ourselves to steal our spines. As frustrating as it is to hear, it's going to take patience, persistence, and determination to beat this virus. There'll be no time to waste in taking the steps we need to turn this crisis around. My administration will start to do this its part on our first day in office with masking requirements, a new strategy for testing, accelerated protection, protective gear. And we're going to challenge Congress and the American people to step up immediately as well to do their part.